I'd like to recognize Mr. Johnson for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I apologize we've been in and out. As, as uh, Mr. Roy explained, uh, not, neither he nor I, many of our colleagues, Republican side, have voted proxy. And uh, because we do believe it's unconstitutional, we're litigating that, as you know. I think it would have been an appropriate uh, subject for our committee to hear at some point, but it uh, was not to occur. So um, apologize for being in and out today. Look, I think I, I've lost count on our Constitution subcommittee, but I this may be the seventh hearing, I think, that we've had on this subject um, in the last year. And um, listen, the integrity of our election system is of critical importance. I mean, we all agree on that. And I know that people try to make this a partisan thing, but it, it should not be. Um, but every Republican that I know, and I, I'm a former state legislator in Louisiana, I know many uh, legislators uh, on the Republican side around the country at the state level, and of course, everyone here in Congress, all of the, my constituents, the party activists, every single Republican that I know wants every eligible voter to participate in our elections. See, the thing about our party is we believe in the original principles of our nation, the, the foundational principles. And we know that free and fair elections are central to all of that. So all the claims that are made, these wild accusations about the supposed intentions of Republican lawmakers around the country are just completely unfounded. You ought to take some time to go talk to these folks and see what they're really about and what they're trying to accomplish. The, the Democrats in Congress are, are, are seeking to commandeer these state redistricting processes in order to enrich themselves politically. I mean, it's just, it's, it's brazenly uh, political and it's obvious to anybody who looks into this. I mean, Washington Democrats are politicizing the VRA, the Voting Rights Act. By, by seeking to overturn common sense and lawful state election integrity reforms. L look at the example in Georgia. It's been discussed today from mostly one side, but the Biden Department of Justice filed suit against the state of Georgia over that new election law, SB 202. That, that law, if, if anybody at home can Google this and, and research it for themselves, don't listen to what pundits and supposed experts are saying about it. Look at the law. It strengthens ballot box protections. It enhances the state's election integrity, and that's why it was popularly supported there. But uh, one of the experts that, who's testified in this committee before on election laws stated that the DOJ's complaint, the lawsuit that the Biden administration filed against that Georgia law, quote, reads more like a press release from the Democratic National Committee than a serious lawsuit by an apolitical justice department, unquote. And, and this is the theme that we've returned to over and over uh, in this year, when we had Attorney General Merrick Garland before us and, and, and all the other hearings that we've had on these subjects and others related to it. The people are losing faith not only in our election system for all the accusations that are flying back and forth, but but more importantly than that, perhaps, in our entire system of justice. They're losing faith in our institutions. The idea that there is equal justice under law, that justice is blind, because they're seeing the Department of Justice, justice being weaponized for political purposes. That is something that should greatly concern us. All this is uh, being done for politics in Washington, and it's a shame. It violates our constitutional order. It violates our, our principles. It is the states that have the authority to do these things. And the Supreme Court has ruled recently, we've covered this ad nauseum, that the, the conditions that existed in 1965 simply do not exist today. There is no evidence of widespread voter suppression or voter discrimination or any of that. This is not about race at all. The, the, the legislators that I know, the ones that are working in all these states, Republican and Democrat, are trying to ensure that the elections are fair and free so that the people do not lose their faith in, in the integrity of the ballot box. If we lose that, y'all, we, we lose everything and everybody should agree with this. I only have one minute left. Maybe I, I'll, I'll ask our minority witness, Ms. Rorden, if there's anything that's been said she'd like to comment on because I know she may not have another opportunity. I'll, I'll give the time to her. Um, well, thank you for that. And I just wanna say that um, I really think that in my experience within the Justice Department, um, the amount of cases that we reviewed during the time that I was there doing Section 5 from 2000 until 2013, when the Shelby County decision was made, um, the amount of objections that we had at that time, Congressman, was 0.36 of 1% of all of the submissions um, you know, that were submitted. And what people don't realize is the amount of work that goes into making a submission to the Department of Justice 
and then the politics that are played by the department in reviewing them. And um, I don't I don't make those accusations uh, lightly. Um, I, I find it to be very uh, disheartening. Um, but I will say that I don't believe that their actions in the past justify them getting that type of control over state um, election law again. That's very well said, and I yield back. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. And I just, I don't think you were here when I told you to people about Everett Dirksen, who's over my head and behind me. He had that argument made in 1964 by Southern uh, legislators that it was up to the states. He worked out compromises to make it acceptable to them, but they still, none of them voted for the Civil Rights or the Voting Rights Act, which Everett Dirksen did and all the Republicans did then when it was the party of Lincoln. I now yield, Jamie, you're not going to be our cleanup hitter because we now have two other powerful hitters, Ms. Bush and Ms. Jackson Lee, but you're going to go 